Welcome to the Darkest Dungeon Mod Spotlight, where I will showcase a modded hero and explain their mechanics. Today we will be taking a look at the Enchantress, created by Scorpio Vaden. The Enchantress is a renegade cultist witch who has forsaken the ways of the cult. Perhaps she has decided that she did not wish to serve their god or participate in their horrible rituals. She has come to eliminate the cultists and end their wicked ways. Enchantress is a support hero focused on crowd control. She has poor damage and no healing. However, her ability to weaken and manipulate the enemy are excellent. The Enchantress has a solid defensive stat line. Her health, her damage, and her blight resistance are all below average. However, her dodge, her speed, her stun resistance, and her debuff resistance are all above average. Everything else is pretty average. Her trap disarm is not at a great level for disarming traps. And her ability to move, she can move two spaces forward and two spaces back, so she can handle shuffles within one turn usually, especially since a couple of her abilities allow her to reposition herself. The Enchantress's first ability is Sideblade. She can use it from the front three positions of your team to attack the front three positions of the enemy team. It moves her back one, it marks your target for three turns, and it does 15 to 35% bonus damage versus humans. This isn't something you're typically going to use a lot because it moves you back, which inevitably is going to put you in the back row where you can't use it again. However, if you're trying to do a marking party, perhaps, you could put her in the third position, start the battle with Psyblade, especially considering her high speed, mark a target, and allow your allies to exploit that. And then she gets to the fourth position where she'll be able to use her other abilities to great effect. So, in certain teams, it might be okay. The Enchantress's next two abilities go hand in hand. She has Telekinetic Push and Telekinetic Pull. Both of these require that she's in the back two positions. The Telekinetic Push can be used against the front two positions of the enemy team, and Telekinetic Pull can only be used against the back two positions. The Pull pulls them forward two spaces, and the Push knocks them back two spaces. Both of these abilities have a minus 80% damage modifier, so it's never going to do a lot. And it stuns the enemy with a strong stun. This is some of the Enchantress's bread and butter. She can pull dangerous enemies out of the back line and stun them for a turn, allowing your team to kill them with ease, or perhaps the enemy team has a brigand bloodletter in the front, clogging things up and you can't get to the uh, the other brigands that are with them. And you can just telekinetic push, shove the blood letter all the way to the back, and that'll send the other enemies to the front. So this is her primary way of controlling the enemy team and setting up kills for the rest of your team. The Enchantress's fourth skill is Empathic Calm. This is basically Cry Havoc of the Houndmaster, combined with the Jester's Reduced Stress buff on Inspiring Tune. It heals 3 to 7 stress to everyone in your party with a 66% chance each, and it lowers the amount of stress everyone gets by 10 to 20% for 3 turns. It's useful on the Houndmaster, it's useful on the Enchantress. The Enchantress's next ability is Alluring Charm. She can only use this from the first position. It targets a random enemy anywhere in the enemy team. 
It has a minus 60% damage modifier. It moves the enchanters back to, debuffs your target's dodge by 15 to 20, has a normal chance to stun the enemy, and it self heals the enchantress by 3 to 7. You're not going to be using this too frequently, but this is a good way to get back into position if you expect to get shuffled or pulled forward. You can equip the Luring Charm with a couple other things and be able to reposition pretty easily. But otherwise, it's not typically something you'd want to use. The Enchantress's sixth skill is Mind Burn. She has to be in the back two positions to use it, and it hits both of the back, back two positions of the enemy team. It has poor accuracy at first rank, just a low 75 accuracy, but it gains 10 accuracy per level. So by the time you start getting up to rank 3, 4, and 5, it's going to be pretty accurate. It has a minus 30% damage modifier, but it hits two targets, so that's not too bad. And it does 15 to 35% bonus damage versus humans. So it can be a good way to get extra damage out on cultist witches or brigand raiders and stuff. But most of the time I feel like I prefer just stunning and pulling enemies forward rather than mind burning. Still, it can be useful to get out a little extra damage to finish off an enemy sometimes. The Enchantress's final ability is Mass Control. She must be in the back position to use it, but it targets every position on the enemy team. It has poor accuracy at first, at 70, and then gains 10% per level, much like Mind Burn, till it has a decent accuracy at the higher ranks. It has minus 100% damage, does no damage, it has a high chance to debuff the enemy by 20 to 30 protection. It debuffs their damage by 30 to 40 percent. It lowers their accuracy by 5 to 18 percent. And that's it. Seems pretty good. I mean, you can just spam this and enemies totally crippled, does no damage. Well, yeah, it is kind of OP. The reason for this is it's supposed to have a self-debuff on it. It's supposed to have the Jester's old self-debuff from when he would use Finale. He would get a big debuff to his stats. However, when the Jester got updated, that debuff no longer exists in the regular Darkest Dungeon code. So this mod is referencing that debuff that no longer exists, so it's not on the skill. I asked Scorpio Vaden if he plans on changing it, and he hasn't responded yet, but I hope that he can fix it sometime soon to make this a little more balanced. In the meantime, feel free to abuse it, or don't. Regardless, it's, it's a pretty good skill. E even if it had the debuff, I think it would be a pretty good skill. As it is, I'm probably going to limit how much I use it, maybe once in a while, and I'm certainly not going to spam it. But that's just my personal choice. The Enchantress has some pretty useful camping skills. This first one you may recognize. Turn back time, it is the Chester's camping skill. For three time points, you reduce one companion's stress by 30, and if they are afflicted, they lose an additional 15 stress. It's a great way to get one person down who has a lot of stress in one shot, for a relatively low time point cost. Our next camping skill is Psionic Senses. For two time points, you prevent nighttime ambush, reduce the chance that your party gets surprised by 20%, and increase the chance that you surprise monsters by 20%. For two time points, this is a steal. Uh, night, most nighttime ambush abilities cost four. Uh, 
Some of them cost three, like the Occultist, but it comes with penalties like stress. This is just amazing. Her next camping skill is Telepathic Barrier. It looks an awful lot like the Festival's Sanctuary. The only difference is that it costs three time points, and it doesn't have a religious stipulation. So if for some reason someone had mortality debuffs, maybe you, you, you'll use this to prevent nighttime ambush rather than using psionic senses. But otherwise, this isn't going to get as much use as psionic senses. Her last camping skill is psionic power. For two time points, you buff one ally with 10 accuracy and 5% crit for four battles. It's a decent buff for two time points. You can give it to the leper or you know any other damage dealer, bounty hunter, highwayman, and they'll do just fine with it. A couple other notes about the Enchantress. She is non-religious. She benefits from the Athenaeum district, to, mostly to increase her debuff skill chance. The kinds of skills that I like using on the Enchantress, I'm typically going to use Telekinetic Pull, because I want to pull those backline characters forward more than I want to push the frontline enemies back. Empathic Calm, as long as my party has any amount of stress, I probably want to be using this to get it down. Mind Burn is a decent way to finish off an enemy that's living with a small amount of health, and you have nothing else better to do. And Mass Control is a good way to apply a lot of debuffs at once. If you feel the skill is too OP, maybe just equip Telekinetic Push to have more versatility, or Psyblade if you think you might get pulled forward. In conclusion, the Enchantress is a powerful support hero. Her high speed and high stun chance mean that she will frequently be able to neutralize a backline enemy by pulling them out of position and preventing them from fixing it on their own. For maximum effect, move enemies so you not only mess up their attacks, but the attacks of their allies as well. If we consider the maximum potential of, max, of mass control, she is pushing into OP territory. Bend Minds and Break Wills. This is the Enchanter. It could be dismissed as a fever dream. If not for the corpses, 